computer is blending frames, you still, you know, I mean, obviously it's a frame that didn't, that hasn't existed for in the last hundred years, but it's still a is blending frames you still you know I mean obviously it's a frame that didn't that hasn't existed for in the last hundred years but it's still a computer is blending frames, you still, you know, I mean, obviously it's a frame that didn't, that hasn't existed for in the last hundred years, but it's still a is blending frames you still you know I mean obviously it's a frame that didn't that hasn't existed for in the last hundred years but it's still a is blending frames you still you know I mean obviously it's a frame that didn't that hasn't existed for in the last hundred years but it's still a hello everyone hello. Ah! <laughs> 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 you scared the hell out of me, Thomas. Uh, uh, welcome to another episode of 10 Forward Weekly. I am your host, Mike Fadum, and your community manager, also known as Ambassador Cal. And uh, Thomas is leaving. Oh, no. Thomas oh, no. is leaving. No, oh. I had to get a rogue. Rogue Kitty. Oh, yeah. You, you want to you get all the popularity for having the cats on your stream. I see how it is. <sighs> No, she just was clawing at my leg. She wanted the attention. Uh-huh, so. uh-huh, sure, I'm sure. Make her regret I could, that decision. I could show off. No, actually, I'm not going to do that. I have three adorable <laughs> sleeping cats next to me, and I could show them off, but then I realized there's all of this mess just off screen that nobody needs to see. Hashtag bless this mess. Ha, 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 ha. So, welcome to 10 Forward Weekly, everybody. Uh, this is a weekly Star Trek online stream where we talk about Everything that's going on in the Star Trek Online universe, and uh, this week we're here to talk about a uh, passion project, um, because uh, once again, Thomas has completely updated his ship, and once again, Thomas has done it because no one told him he couldn't, and he decided, <laughs> like, I have free time, I'm just gonna make the Akira, guys. No one, no one said no, here it is. Oh, now you have to make a bundle out of it, because I made it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I know what happened. <laughs> pretty, pretty close to it. <laughs> uh, so, what what started that process, Thomas? Why did the Akira bug bit, bite you? Um, sorry. Bye cats. Bye cats. <laughs> Just had a... <laughs> the zoomies. The uh, zoomies are upon us. Yeah, we, we have a runner. Um, <laughs> the uh, Akira. Well, you know, we started to get pretty hype in the first contact day. You know, we're getting ready for the release uh, and everything. Um, I was like, oh yeah, that's a good movie. Um, what's in <laughs> First Contact Day ship-wise? And, you know, I thought about the Akira. And uh, I, you know, thought like, oh, that's that's a cool ship. It's a fan favorite. Everybody likes it. Our, our Akira was about, the model we had was about five years old. Um, 
I was the one who actually updated that back then. So the <laughs> model I was replacing was also a model I had built. Um, but, you know, uh, I had done a lot of work with um, the uh, materials for the legendary bundle, the Defiant and Intrepid materials specifically. And uh, I knew that those would be good foundations for a new uh, Akira material. Um, and that uh, updating that material would go a long way to make the ship look better. Um, so I thought, well, at least I could add those legendary material, you know, those revamp materials to the Akira. But after I did that, I thought, well, now I just really want this ship to be up to the same standard as all those legendary remasters. And so it, it definitely kind of took on a life of its own. The uh, scope kind of bloated as I looked closer and closer <laughs> at the at the old model and at the reference, decided like, okay, well we're. Uh, we're just gonna go for it. <laughs> my my own work isn't good enough. I have to fix it now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, back then I didn't have good materials to work with. Also, I had you know a much smaller triangle budget to work with. Yeah. Um. So the new Akira model is about twice as many triangles as the old one. Gotta um, get those triangles a lot... up. Those are rookie triangles. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot smoother, a lot more detailed, a lot more cuts into the hull, which uh, translate really well into the game's lighting engine. Um, and then the, the material, I think, is really doing a lot of the work to make it feel uh, solid, feel like a, um, you know, like a real spaceship uh, compared yeah. to the old textures. Yeah. Uh, Q Cullen says, if you give Thomas a cookie, he's going to ask for a hull material. If you get, give him a hull material, he's going to ask for more polygons. <laughs> None of this is inaccurate. <laughs> uh, but, so, yeah i mean go ahead well i didn't know if you wanted to show actually the first work in progress yeah, image. let's do it let's do it let's dive in so thomas has been gracious enough to uh hold on i'm gonna switch out uh, i found my mouse pad while we were starting the stream so i can get rid of the mouse pad i've been using all day <laughs> um but yeah so the uh, uh thomas has been nice enough to share with us um some uh uh wonderful images of the process of making the ship. So let's start here. This is the first image of the Akira. So what's this, Thomas? Tell us about it. Yeah, so the top is the original um, uh, Akira model um, the from 2015. Um, and, uh, you know, it was a lot more detailed than the launch version of the ship. Um, there are a lot, you know, when I updated it in 2015 i added a lot of other panels you see there but i still had the original material to work with which is really was built for models with lower yeah, so lower triangle counts um and it was built for so stuff 10 years ago yeah 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 and and so the it's a lot more dense there's a lot more like you know uh line work and and things like that on there that you really don't want in the higher triangle count models because the more detail you have in your geo the less detail you need in your textures um and uh the way we model our ships and unwrap our ships we actually want more detail in the geo we want our textures to be pretty simple um because that gives us that way we can do the very specific panel shapes that you that you need to do in uh, star trek ships so um actually in this screenshot really it's uh the two models you're looking at are exactly the same. It's the textures that are different. Huh. So already just by swapping out the textures, you can see how much of a difference it makes in terms of um, um, making it feel a bit more like a real object instead of a you know a video game asset. Because even the model they made in 2015 was a little too detailed for the materials it was using. Yeah. Um, they were. So, so uh, just, to, so that just was... for people in chat who might be wondering, I know you you we sort of talk about it a lot, but what is the relationship between the model and the material? Is the material like a skin, as we you know, as the gamers tend to know it? Yeah, kind of. I mean, um, skin gets thrown around too, where it's a little it's a little confusing, right? Because you some people might look at a uh, a different variant of a ship, the whole variant, including the textures and the uh, geometry, the shapes, and call that a a skin. Um, but in this case, uh, let's see. So if you think of geometry as the shapes, the actual 3D, like you know, a round saucer versus a triangle saucer or whatever, that's the geometry. 
the material is the you know 2D image that gets projected onto the geometry to give it a a material we we call it a material um, a sense of this is metal this is plastic you know this is white this is black this is gray this is red um, that's the material um, or texture um, and so that's a, that's a 2D image that you uh, either project or unwrap onto a 3D surface. If you think about like uh, one of those like clementine oranges that you can peel with your hands. Yeah. Um, if you if you've ever peeled one where like the whole actually hold on, this is kind of gross, but um, all right, I had this orange in front of us. Yeah, no, no. Uh, I had this for breakfast breakfast this morning. So this is right. So this is the 3D shape, and then you unwrap it. And it's flat, like a texture. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, it, but if you're looking at the texture, this is something I've always been curious about, and then I'll ask the fan questions. But, um, when you guys create a texture or a material that has to, um, work with every ship, like a shield vanity or, um, mm -hmm. you know, different Starfleet materials, uh, how does it know what parts are supposed to be one color on different models? So um, this is a uh, a good thing and a challenging thing about how we build chips and stow. Um, that whole process of unwrapping the orange uh, that I just talked about is called uh, UV mapping, mm. um, and basically you're taking you know you're taking a 3D object, you're flattening it, and then you're moving it to a certain area on your texture sheet. So on STO ships, every ship is in every ship material use the same uh, template for their UV map. So if for the orange example, if I always knew that the top of the orange was in the same place, um, then I could make the top of my orange. Uh, well, I'm, I, I'm straining this analogy, but, yeah. but the idea is that for, for STO ships, the, you know, the, the blue warp grills, the warp nacelles are always in the same place in the texture sheet. Um, the deflector are always the sa same place. No matter what ship, no matter what ship material, all of that stuff is always in the same place. So on we know that every sheet, ship... not on the ship. Right. Um, and then so the, when we take the geo and unwrap it to those texture sheets, we know that every material will theoretically work with every ship. Um, okay. and, and, you know, and some work better than others, but, but ultimately it's a standardized template that all of our ships use. Uh, this can be challenging because there are certain ships that have really specific texture needs, and we might not either might not be able to execute on those 100% accurate to the canon, um, or or we have to do something really special with how we build the ship to accommodate that. Um, but uh, but ultimately, it makes it really flexible. And the other nice thing is that now, uh, especially um, in the last few years, that we've really built more geometry into the ships. That means that we can make things a lot more accurate because we, we can actually, instead of having to try to have kind of a one-size-fits-all you know, panel lines on a texture, we can just model those panels into the model exactly and then unwrap them to our generic trims and things um on our on our material that's really cool and so you get yeah and so that's what's happening with the, so, with the akira so then is the process uh if that you model the ship and then when you're done with the model you designate where on the model each part of the uv map is so that the texture knows how to unwrap itself neat yeah yeah um, that's a super, th super some... simplified version i'm sure but yeah well and and we can actually you'll see some of the through Okay, cool. Well, let's progress through then. Uh, image two. Here we go. So what's this, Thomas? Tell us all about it. So this is um, after I started working on the, you know, updating uh, the model. So this is uh, mostly the old... Um, the saucer, I started to add more panels and round it out. If you... I don't know if you can zoom in or not. Uh, um, yeah, I probably there's can. There's an area... Uh, there's an area on the saucer that it looks all stretchy. Show me where. Um, it's you see the blue and red. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. This bit right here. Um, so that is what it looks like before you actually apply the UV. It's it's um, you know before you actually start UVing the the textures onto the model. It's um, it's just kind of taking random positions for the UVs. So it looks all stretched because. The texture coordinates, what we call the how the 
vertices of the model align with uh, position on the 2D texture map um, are all pretty much randomized or you know stretched or whatever. So the the kind of the weird um, uh, stretching you see here happens before you know just kind of the natural state, and you have to go in and manually place those texture coordinates to get things to be mapped up mapped correctly. Interesting. How long of a process is that? Um, UV mapping can for a model like one of our ships can take three or four days, wow. um, depending on how complicated it is. It's one of the more. It's actually almost as intensive as actually modeling the ship, frankly. <laughs> um, uh, or at least in this case, it was more intensive because I, I started with the original model and I added a lot of detail to it and I you know rounded it out and uh, all that. So I was starting with something that existed, but. For the UVs, I had to start pretty much from scratch because the old UVs um, weren't really appropriate. You know, I couldn't because I changed the model so much. The original UVs weren't really usable anymore. Got it. Okay, cool. Um, somebody was asking if the uh, uh, let's see who it actually was who was asking. Um, uh, Big Puppy Stewart was asking if the higher res textures uh, would clash with other textures when you mix and match parts. I assume that's not happening because of everything we just talked about, where you know, no matter what parts you put on the ship, the material will use the UV mapping to make everything look consistent. Right. Yeah. It should. Yeah. It should be fine. Yeah. I um, mean, the, the the one thing you might see is that the really old Akira parts. They might look a little flat compared to some of the newer parts because their the geometry won't be nearly as detailed. Um, but the you know whenever you change the material on the model, the entire material is applied to the whole ship. So yeah. at the very least, the whole ship will have one material look to it. It's just that some of the older like the older nacelles or saucer or whatever on these old Akira models might look a little flat compared to the revamp. Got it. Uh, Flygon Daytonan wants to know, uh, what kind of reference material did you have when you were working on this? Did you have, um, uh, did you have like the actual models from CBS to look at? Do you have high res photos of that or were we just kind of, you just kind of working off of screenshots and memories? Um, I had, uh, there's a guy who worked on DS9 Enterprise named Doug Drexler. Um, mm. he had a website for a while called Drex Files where he posted, super high res renders of the actual like cg studio models um from various incarnations of star trek um that site is not around anymore but i think at some point he had posted really good renders of the akira so i was able to track those down and um uh use those as reference what's funny about it is looking at that model which i think first contact was 1996 um i'm gonna google that really quick uh the uh yep 96 so it was the akira was a cg model for that movie um but it was super low detailed because we're talking about 1996 cg yeah. so i am 100 percent sure that my akira model for stowe is more detailed like with more detailed geometry than what they used in star trek first contact <laughs> um if you look at the reference for the uh you know, for the, the actual studio CG model, the textures are pretty low resolution. The geometry is really simple. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just how things evolve, right? Yeah. Uh, that we can have a, a more detailed model in our time video game in 2020. <laughs> so what time, what, when did Star Trek switch over fully to CG models? When did that actual switch over happen? Is that like mid DS9 it happened? I can't remember. Yeah, mid DS9. Late, or maybe late DS9, mid-Voyager. Yeah. Um, I don't know for sure, but I want to say it was like season three or four of Voyager. Somebody in the chat probably knows. Yeah. Um, but, uh, and you know, and they always had stock shots of this physical models from Voyager and DS9. They would use probably for the whole show. But yeah. uh, that was actually one of the reasons that they, so uh, late in DS9, spoilers, the USS Defiant is destroyed, I think in the end of season six. Um and at the beginning of season seven, they bring it, you know, they get a new USS Defiant, um, but they couldn't update the registry number to say NCC 74205A um, because all the stock footage had the old registry number on it and they didn't want to uh, keep being able to use all that, that footage. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> that's awesome. People in chat are saying it was season six of DS9 and season four of Voyager. So yeah, that sounds about right to what we were saying. Yeah. Uh, and okay, let's look at the next image. Thomas, tell us all about this weird part. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this is a clay shader in 3D Studio Max. Um, artists like to use this when uh, they're modeling something and they don't have materials on it yet, or they have materials on it, but the UVs are all messed up. And so, you know, the material can be a distraction to your actual model. So you use this clay thing to get a good sense of the form and shadows uh, of what you're building. So this is a work in progress um, image I took just to show off, you know, all the detail that had been added to the saucer which included the panels, um, the impulse engines, and then some of the work that I had done on the, um, the boom, uh, the hull section, um, catamaran. But uh, it, you know, the clay, uh, clay model shader is a useful tool just to make sure that things are smoothing the way you want them to. Um, and uh, you've got the right shapes uh, that you're going for. And again, this is a work in progress. So it, the, you know, it actually ended up looking kind of different from this in certain, certain places, but it's a part of the process. Um, a lot of people in chat are pointing out that it looks like an ax or a guitar. Uh, I want both of those <laughs> in the game. Uh, I think a Akira would make a pretty badass guitar, like yeah. a dual necked guitar. Oh, that'd hell be, yeah. That'd... that'd be dope. <laughs> um, so question about this, since this is half the image, do you do, you know, kind of like how Hector was, uh, on the stream last week where he would draw half of it and then just double it over because starships are symmetrical. Is that what you guys do when you're modeling? Yeah, absolutely. If we can. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, it's, uh, for a lot of reasons. I mean, laziness is one of them, but, like, <laughs> that's, but, a, but mainly, that's not laziness. That's efficiency. They're very different. It's efficiency. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. Well, and you, you know, you want to make sure that like they match. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there are symmetry modifiers that let you, uh, or, you know, um, do one side and it affects the other side. Um, now the Akira is asymmetrical in a few places. So basically you have to like finish the parts of the model that are, that are symmetrical. Then you meld those together and then add the asymmetrical bits on top Got uh, when you're all done. Okay. That's cool. You'll have to show me the asymmetrical bits when we look at the ship later. All right, so what's this picture mm -hmm. all about, Thomas? So this is um, when I had started, uh, actually, I finished modeling the saucer and started applying the textures to it, um, and, you know, doing that UV process we talked about. Um, these images are all from, like, daily status reports yeah. uh, for the for the leads on, on the Stowe team. So... Um, so this is just what I've been able to do that day. Like I said, it was kind of a, I think it was a four, three or four day long process of unwrapping this. So um, doing this takes a while, especially the more geometry you have, the more, you know, uh, the longer it takes to unwrap. And um, when you add in things, I don't know if people can see the little dark lines around the edge of the panels. Um, and that's done to, you know, add definition to those panel shapes, which are a pretty distinct part of the Akira's design. Um, and, you know, we went to good lengths to make sure that they were there and that they were, um, they respected the, the, the canon look of the ship. Yeah. So, um, yeah. but all of that takes time, like in setting your faces to get, get the border and then unwrapping the individual borders of each panel. It's the, uh, you know, it's all, it's all a lot of work to get it, uh, to get it to look right. Uh, Magic Yellow wants to know how long the entire process was from beginning to end. For the whole ship, um, and again, Fuck. remember, I had something to start with. Uh, I was starting with the existing model. Um, ended up doing a lot more work to it than I expected, um, but I think it was a couple weeks. Um, uh, intermingled with my other responsibilities as yeah. lead, you know, meetings and reviews and. Uh, other UI issues and stuff. Yeah, you're very good at balancing um, your lead stuff with your fun making Starship stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, just because I work more. That's, that's how <laughs> yeah. I do. I don't really, yeah. I don't know if balance is the right word, but. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> All right. Uh, here's number five. Tell us about number five, Thomas. Yeah, it's um, the underside. The same, uh, <laughs> part of the same process, just the underside showing the hull uh unwrapped um uh you can see how 
Um, so that, you know, if you look at the flat version of that texture, um, those squares are a perfect grid, right? So when you're unwrapping to these weird shapes, you want to translate that grid in a way that sort of relays the, the physical shape that you're going for um, with this model. So you want, you want it to feel constructed, and you want those panels to kind of be laid out in a logical way for the shape of the ship. Um, and so that takes some doing to get it to, to, um, to look the way that you want it to look. You have to massage it pretty, uh, pretty carefully. Um, it's not just sort of just, you can't just like plop the shape down onto your flat texture and you're done. You have to, um, realign each sort of layer of each deck, if you want to say it, of, of the whole to and then like squeeze it in to get that um, sort of how it you know fans out. That's all really deliberate when you're unwrapping to make it uh, uh, feel natural to the shape of the ship. Got it. Uh, Flygande Tunin wants to know um, if you were uh, when it comes to hard points. Was there any difficulty in determining where the beam cannon points are placed on a model like this? This one's pretty easy um, when you've got, there are a lot of different places that uh, they can go. I had to add, back in 2015, I had to add a couple extra phasers to the rear of the ship. Um, and they're still there uh, for the rear firing weapons. Um, a lot of complaints that come about for like, oh, why is this hard point here or whatever, um, happen because uh, we have a certain set um uh, collection of hard points we can use some of those respect the fact that they are above or below the ship and some don't uh, which means that if you add dual beam banks on a certain place on the ship if if you're firing those dual beams at somebody below you they could clip through the saucer if they're not on the very edge front edge of the ship thankfully the akira has details pretty close to the front edge for things like that um akira is pretty straightforward there are other ships that are more difficult what was uh, the difficult for one? sure um, like the, I saw somebody was complaining about the USS uh, Kelvin on Reddit the other mm -hmm. day. Um, pretty much any ship that doesn't have a weapon hard point in the very center, like a uh, top or bottom center is hard because we have to figure out where we're going to put the turret node. And mm -hmm. usually there's not a great answer for that. Like any cannon ship, like if it's a STO ship, we can just add a phaser wherever we want. Right. But if it's a cannon ship that doesn't have an obvious position for you know the, this like central weapon to go um you sort of have to uh just kind of put it in a, a place that looks okay but isn't super satisfying got it uh all right and here is i think the last one yeah here's the last one tell us yeah there might be a uh yeah oh, no, uh, there is one more there, there is one a... more sorry you're right yeah uh, i think they're both at the same stage it's top and bottom view oh, okay. this is after the yeah. um the model was finished and the textures were finished and um i started adding a new windows material to it so i don't know people some people might notice that it has the little extra triangles for the escape pods that's a a new escape pod texture based on the sovereign escape pods we did for the remastered sovereign um i was able to pull that in to make it more accurate to the original akira and um and yeah, so this is this is when it's uh, almost done. Uh, there's still some decals and things that will be added, but um, this is really this, it's probably I'd say about 85 or 90 percent of the way in the process. That's awesome. Uh, I'm I'm just shooting out a quick hello to my father and my daughter who are apparently watching right now. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Uh, uh, Atreya says, "Is that why we get weapons coming from the bridge in some cases?" Yes, that's exactly why that. That happens in some cases. That's just the sort of least bad place that we can yeah. we can put those mounts uh, if the ship doesn't have any obvious uh, other spots for them. Yeah. Uh, cool. All right. Well, let's go take a look at the ship in the game uh, since we're here. And here she is. Boy, is she pretty. Uh, let's see. Can I move around like this? Yes. Uh, let me know if you guys are hearing the game and if it's too loud. Uh, it shouldn't be because we're not in a fight. But I can check on that. Um, I can just maybe turn that down. No, I can't. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what should we... This is the actual model. My God, is she pretty in-game. Uh, what What do you want to take a closer look at here, Thomas? 
Well, um, mainly the new, you know, it's, it is a lot smoother. There's a lot more detail on it. Um, I've changed how some of the panels um, are built. So uh, the, on the shoulders, you've got uh, a bit more, they extrude out instead of being cut in. Um, there's a lot more detail on the top of the torpedo pod. So if we look at that um, in the back. Oh, torpedo pod, yeah. Sorry, it's a... Uh, That's fine. On our, because we don't have the uh, controls to make the camera slower at home. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. no, yeah. Am I looking at the top or the um, front here? The top, please. Okay. On my way. There we go. Uh, yeah, so um, so we've got, you know, that's pretty much traced from the reference the, the um, <coughs> of the model on from ILM. What's, what was challenging about that is uh, there are a lot of dark panels on that model, and some of them are obviously extruded, and some <laughs> of them are recessed, mm. and it's not clear from the views that I had, like, which was which. So I just, you know, just kind of had to make my best guess um, about which ones, you know, were <laughs> basically innies versus outies. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, but but uh, it adds a lot of good cool texture and and shapes to the to the ship so i, th I think it looks really cool yeah um, and uh, this material is it is a new material based on the defiant material uh, it's a bit darker uh, to match the the reference um, and a bit more glossy because the material the akira was actually a bit more glossy when you look at how it was uh, the material was set up. The main difference is the deflector. So if we go to the bottom and front, yeah, um, on my way. Excuse me as I go through the ship. <laughs> yeah, so that's a new deflector that that matches the look of the deflector from the model. Um, this is actually when I was looking at the reference, I sort of realized that I think what they did. So this is what I did: is I think they took the sovereign's deflector. And tinted it blue, oh. <laughs> and then that became the Akira's deflector. And so that's pretty much what I did for ours. I changed the glows to match, you know, and uh, tweaked it a bit. But but ultimately, it had very dis discrete spokes, um, like the Sovereign deflector. So, which makes sense because uh, they were built it, around the same time. So, yeah, and and you know they had. Um, I think they were using a lot of uh, photographic reference for their textures when you look at the ships. A lot of the models, excuse me, that were built for first contact. If you look at the models really closely, you'll notice details on their textures that are clearly like, oh, that's from the galaxy, like the mm. actual physical galaxy model, or that's from the sovereign model. That they took pictures, like actual photos of <laughs> the physical model, and, and used that and as pasted their those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so, fascinating. Uh, yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's what they did for this too. That's really cool. What else should we look at? Um, let's see, uh, we can go to the, uh, the underside, just kind of three quarters underside view. Um, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of cool layering and stuff happening down here uh, yeah. that I was able to, yeah. to kind of elaborate on. And then obviously the hull has been, uh, smoothed out quite a bit. Uh, the, you know, the windows were remapped to be a lot more. Uh, that, that's a new set of windows to go with the escape pods uh, based on the sovereign texture and then they I rearranged them so there are a lot more of them they sort of match what the original um, uh, the density of the original Akira as nice. opposed to our older ship had fewer windows uh, let's move to the lower back so kind of the same <laughs> that's where you're uh, holding a lot of elevation. attention right in the lower back <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is good. Um, so I don't know if you noticed that the crease there um, on the the stanchions, um, yeah, or the pontoons. There's like a crease. Um, the old model that was just flat. That was just a flat surface. So um, on the Canon Akira, there actually is kind of a crease where it comes down to a uh, a point. Um, so I added that in. That uh, is an important part of like kind of the organic feel of the ship. Uh, I was glad to get that done, and then the um, from from the if we look at it from the back, I also 
elongated out uh, how the rear uh, part of those struts flares, that's more accurate too. It's uh, it's longer and more gradual compared to what we had before. Um, also, the engines don't protrude from. So in the in the real model, there the engines are actually flush with the oh, edge of the, the pontoons, and so I fixed that as well. That's really cool. Yeah, and um, oh, if you wanted a, to see it's the got a little face in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to see the asymmetrical thing that's right behind oh, yeah. the bridge, which is kind of a fun area that I also uh, added uh, some detail to. Oh, wow. So see how that circle has just, just kind of offset? Off. Yeah. Slightly? Yeah, that's that's how it is. <laughs> so we've got that. And then there's a, um, you know, a door behind the bridge added that. There's nice. a lot of detail uh, this part that was added. Um, some of it the original model had. But just uh, part of it is just sort of cleaning all that up. The bridge, you know, corrected the shape of the bridge module, um, rounded that out a bit. There's there's a lot of small stuff. Um, you know, a lot of things individually I think people don't notice. But when you take it all as a whole, you can just tell the model feels right. It feels yeah. more substantial. You um, hear the music in your head. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so when you're uh, doing something adding, like this... Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, the other thing was uh, adding the United planets oh, uh, yeah. livery to the side that was just a long red stripe before but we had that in our texture sheet now so i was able to add that, to add that back uh, in. which i think is a fun um a That's fun neat. part of the ship so when you're doing um when you're taking a canon model and there's a section of the ship that just you know because of whatever reason has no detail in canon and you have to add something mm -hmm. there what's the process like do you approach it thinking of like you know, will this look cool? How what what makes sense to be there on the ship from a from a like story perspective? What what's your process? Yeah, I mean, like, so uh, if we look at the the rear hangar bays, um, that's a good example of where there was detail that I and so I added some. It, it's definitely a functionally what makes sense here from an art perspective. What does this area need? Um, can, is there detail from other Star Trek ships that I could borrow from, so it still fits in with, uh, you know, with the universe? It's not um, extrapolating too much. So those yellow lines are those hangar deck lines, though, and the numbers. Um, I don't remember. I don't think the numbers were there either. So these decals around the hangar deck I added to the model back in 2015, and I kept them this time, uh, cool. just because they're. They're, they're a nice addition to the model, and they sort of emphasize its role. You know, the guy who invented the Akira, designed the Akira, was a guy named Alex Yeager, and he saw it as kind of a attack carrier type ship. Yeah. Um, and so he built in these big hangar decks, and he had all this headcanon about the ship. Uh, so, you know, we want to honor that in Stowe, and I wanted to honor that in the elaborations that I did to the design. That's really cool. Um, Duncan Idaho was wondering how much of the Akira model was reused for the NX. Do you know? Because uh, details in the two seem very congruent. Um, so uh, I recommend watching going to Trek. Um, they did an interview with Doug Drexler about this. Uh, it's really fascinating because uh, originally you cut out a bit when you said the name of the channel, I assume Trek Yards. Oh, Trek Yards. Yeah, yeah. Trek Yards. Um, they did an interview with Doug Drexler, who was the guy who designed the NX-01. Um, and essentially what happened was um, the producers of Enterprise knew that fans liked the Akira, so they just wanted to use the Akira model from Star Trek First Contact as <laughs> the ship in Star Trek Enterprise with like no changes to it at all. And, um, and so the art department found out about that, and they were like shocked and horrified. And they got the production designer, Herman Zimmerman, to go back to the producers and say, no, we need this ship to be its own thing. We can make it you know, based on the shape of the Akira, if that's what you really want. But it needs to look different, right? It needs to yeah, have... because it's from hundreds uh, of years own... before, for one thing. Exactly, right. <laughs> it needs different nacelles and materials and all that stuff. Yeah. So um, I have no idea if Doug started... Um, actually, I'm, I'm almost sure that the shooting model of Enterprise, I, I highly doubt that has any pieces of the Akira in it. I'm pretty sure that was a from scratch model. Uh, the concept model Doug made, um, 
I don't know about that. Him, you know, he. I think he, he definitely had access to renders and stuff, and you know, yeah. uh, uh, use that. I don't know if he started with the actual ILM mod, um, but there is definitely a production reason the ships look too similar. And um, <laughs> when I learned that, I I I became I, I actually liked the NX more when I learned that because it was like <laughs> oh. It could have been so much worse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let me. Uh, apparently, running Star Trek is uh, at the same time as killing our internet. So let me switch back to the guest menu here. Um, cool. Uh, well, is there any final thoughts you have about um, the Akira or Star Trek ships or anything you want to tease before we go, Thomas? Uh, is there anything I can tease? Uh, Star ship. We've got. Yeah, we've the got voting cool, for that starts uh, tomorrow, so look out for that yeah. on the on Star Trek Online dot com. And um, I I don't want to commit to this, but uh, Mike and I have been talking about maybe streaming some of. I might stream some of the work on that, so you guys can see sort of soup to nuts how that process goes. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping we can do some of that. Like I said on last week's stream, we're hoping to get more artists coming on the channel. Thomas is kind of spearheading that. Um, and just, you know, it, it, when they're working at home, streaming what some of they're doing. So they may not be talking to you guys, but you'll still get to see part of the process. It'll be in, an interesting experiment. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Can I a answer that question? The sure. The flag and tune in. Uh, reality and restrictions out the window. What is a ship you'd like to update, add next to the game? That you never really have an opportunity to do to other, excuse me, other than uh, due to other projects taking priority. Um, that's an interesting question because it's sort of uh, answering that might reveal too much about what ships are and are not high priority. Uh, mm -hmm. Ship that I would I would love to the, add to the game. Maybe I've said this on stream. Maybe I haven't. Is the NSCA protector from Galaxy Quest. <laughs> um, uh, I would love to do that. Um, I. There are a lot of ships that I know people are asking for uh, that could use a remaster. There are a lot of cryptic original ships, like the Shikar Miranda variant, um, you know, a lot of the uh, old Akira variants, some of the original T2, T1 Constitution variants that I think, like the Excalibur, um, I would love to go back and touch all of that, to clean all that up, to bring it, you know, like iterate on those designs a bit, add a lot more detail to bring them up to a current standard. Um, but that's all really hard because it's, that's all, you know, two or three weeks of work each. Um, yeah. And, you know, we'd rather make new stuff that you guys can enjoy. So yeah. finding time to do that is, it, it would be a really, a real challenge. Uh, but it would be a really fun, and the more we do these canon ships, the more I definitely would love to go back and update some of our old non-canon STO sh stuff as well. Yeah, like the Excalibur class. No, kidding, that was not even in the game. <laughs> no, it is. There, oh, it is? It's a Excalibur class in the game. Yeah, oh, okay. it's um, it's our box art ship. The ship on our box art is called the Excalibur class. Oh, okay. Um, I was thinking of the original um, concept art Excalibur. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, of course, there's also the other concept art ships that we will never make. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we should have a stream. We should go through some of that stuff. That would actually think, be a really like, interesting stream. It would be, but I also think it would be. There's there's some concept. We have all of the concepts that Perpetual did for this game before they um before it went over to Cryptic and like in everything. Uh, there's some great ideas. There's some bad ideas. They did a lot of concept art, and we don't have any gauge on what they were actually planning on using or not. So I, I don't know if we want right. to spend, you know, an hour making fun of other people's work, <laughs> but there's some interesting no, stuff in there. It doesn't need to be there. There's some cool stuff like the, the and Andrew Probert who designed the original galaxy class did a lot of work on the interior. Mm. Um, like for, uh, for that game. Uh, so there's a lot of interior galaxy hallways and, um, different quarters and stuff that were just they're just it's just neat art It'd be fun to show it off but yeah. you know we'll see 